to this Chancery of the Embassy of India. We are here to commemorate the Republic Day of India. We'll begin with the flag hoisting. May I request the ambassador to come and unfurl the flag. After he unfurls the flag, I request all of you to join us in the singing of the national anthem. And that's it. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and a very warm welcome to you. I have the great privilege to read to you the address of the Honorable President of India delivered on the eve of the 64th Republic Day of India. Mere Pyare Deshwasiyo, Chonsathwe Ganatantra Divas ki Purva Sandhya par मैं भारत में और विदेशों में बसे आप सभी को हार्दिक बधाई देता हूं मैं अपनी सशस्त्र सेनाओं अर्धसैनिक बलों तथा आंतरिक सुरक्षा बलों को विशेष बधाई देता हूं इंडिया हैज चेंज मोर इन द लास्ट सिक्स डेकेड्स देन इन सिक्स प्रीवियस सेंचुरीज दिस इज नाइदर एक्सीडेंटल नो प्रोविडेंशियल history shifts its pace when touched by vision the great dream of raising a new india from the ashes of colonialism reached a historic denouement in 1947 more important independence became a turning point for an equally dramatic narrative nation building the foundations were laid through our constitution adopted on 26 january 1950 which we celebrate each year as republic day its driving principle was a compact between state and citizen a powerful public private partnership nourished by justice liberty and equality india did not win freedom from the british in order to deny freedom to indians the constitution represented a second liberation this time from the stranglehold of traditional inequity in gender caste community along with other fetters that had chained us for far too long this inspired a cultural evolution which put indian society on the track to modernity society change in a gradual evolution for violent revolution is not the indian way change across the knotted weaves of the social fabric remains a work in progress impelled by the periodic reform in law and the momentum of popular will in the last 6 decades there is much that we can be proud of our economic growth rate has more than tripled the literacy rate has increased by over 4 times after having attained self sufficiency now we are net exporters of food grain significant reduction in the incidence of poverty has been achieved among our other major achievements is the drive towards gender equality 
No one suggested this would be easy. The difficulties that accompanied the first quantum leap, the Hindu Code Bill enacted in 1955, tell their own story. It needed the unflinching commitment of leaders like Jawaharlal Nehru and Baba Saheb Ambedkar to push through this remarkable legislation. Jawaharlal Nehru would later describe this as perhaps the most important achievement of his life. The time has now come to ensure gender equality for every Indian woman. We can neither evade nor abandon this national commitment, for the price of neglect will be high. Vested interests do not surrender easily. The civil society and the government must work together to fulfill this national goal. Fellow citizens, I speak to you when a grave tragedy has shattered complacency. The brutal rape and murder of a young woman, a woman who was symbol of all that new India strives to be, has left our hearts empty and our minds in turmoil. We lost more than just a valuable life. We lost a dream. If today young Indians feel outraged, can we blame our youth? There is a law of the land, but there is also a higher law. The sanctity of a woman is a, is a directive principle of that larger edifice called Indian civilization. The Vedas say that there is more than one kind of mother. Birth mother, a guru's wife, a king's wife, a priest's wife, she who nurses us, and our motherland. Mother is our protection from evil and oppression, our symbol of life and prosperity. When we brutalize a woman, we wound the soul of our civilization. It is time for the nation to reset its moral compass. Nothing should be allowed to spur cynicism, as cynicism is blind to morality. We must look deep into our conscience and find out where we have faltered. The solutions to problems will have to be found through discussion and conciliation of views. People must believe that governance is an instrument for good, and for that, we must ensure good governance. There may be some reason for concern, but none for despair. If India has changed more in six decades than six previous centuries, then I promise you it will change more in the next 10 years than in the previous 60. India's enduring vitality is at work. Even the British sensed that they were leading a land which was very different from the one they had occupied. At the base of the Jaipur column in Rashtrapati Bhavan, there is an inscription. In thought, faith, in word, wisdom, in deed, courage, in life, service, so may India be great. The spirit of India is written in stone. Jai Hind. And now that I've had the privilege of uh, sharing with you the address by the Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, delivered on the eve of the 64th Republic Day of India, I simply wish to do two more things. One is to wish each one of you a very happy 2013. The Indian community in Mexico, as I can see by the turnout this morning, is growing in numbers. And it's not just the Indian community that has turned out today to celebrate this momentous occasion in the life of a nation. We have with us many members from Mexican society, many members of our staff who are Mexicans but they're also Indians at heart and share with us the many things that we celebrate in common. India and Mexico have civilizational linkages that go back to a distant past. Our trade relations, our economic relations are growing at a very brisk pace. We have bilateral trade now in excess of five to six billion US dollars, growing at more than 40% per annum. And these are good things as the world is imploding, as Mexico seeks to reach out to Asian countries, 
as it seeks to implement its membership of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, Mexico will have to review its ties in the greater Asia-Pacific region. And India is a very important part of that landscape. Today, when the rest of the world is reeling under the second economic crisis, when it looks certain that for the next five years or so, growth in Europe, growth in the traditional engines of economic power, such as the United States, will not deliver as much. There is confidence that economies in Asia, such as India, China, Malaysia, Singapore, elsewhere in Africa, such as South Africa, in Latin America, economies such as Mexico, these are the economies that will provide the necessary growth for a global economic recovery. And it is at a time like this that it is essential for us to promote and to nurture this bilateral relationship, this growing bilateral relationship between India and Mexico. Both dynamic countries, both high growth economies, both with large populations and capable human resources, we together can forge a new economic landscape. This partnership, therefore, is very important. I have no doubt that the new government in place in Mexico is going to support our efforts in fulfilling this great task. Every meeting that I've had with members in the new administration here gives me that hope and confidence that I will be supported by one and all in the execution of my duties. So I once again want to thank each one of you for turning out this morning. But there still remains a very important thing that I wanted to convey to you, which is to celebrate the presence among us this morning of the most respected Dr. Rasik Vihari Joshi. Now let me, before you give him a big hand, let me simply tell you why it is a great privilege. It's a great privilege for all of us that Dr. Rasik Vihari Joshi, on the 9th of January in Kochi, at the 11th Pravasiya Bharatiya Divas in India, was awarded India's highest civilian honor that could be bestowed on a non-resident Indian. And Dr. Asik Vihari Joshi is therefore a symbol of all that the community overseas, the 25 million to 30 million Indians that live abroad are capable of. Not each one of us can hope to get the same award. But when people of the eminence and stature of Dr. Joshi receive such an award at the hands of our leadership, it is a matter of great pride, not only for representatives such as myself, who had the privilege to serve in the country where Dr. Joshi resides, but also each one of you. So he is the symbol of what Indians are capable of after long and hard work over a lifetime. In Dr. Joshi's case, he has made momentous contributions to Sanskrit literature. He is a famed scholar of repute. And all I want to simply say, Dr. Joshi, is that you've done us all very, very proud. We want to convey our most sincere congratulations and felicitations to you. How I wish the youth all over the world among the Indian diaspora can see you, uh, read your works in person, and take some inspiration from the achievements that you have made over your lifetime. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome.